When we deliver sessions to young sports people, at the moment one of our big focuses is on addiction to smartphones, addiction to social media, and also the impact that that has on sleep. During those sessions we'll give the theory. We'll give a number of practical tips to young players about how they can tear themselves away from devices in the evening. Also in recent weeks I've been giving a number of sessions to commercial and training ground staff at Premier League football clubs and we've been saying the exact same thing to them because frankly this stuff impacts all of us. We give practical tips about how you can tear yourself away from your device and those measures that you should put in place, particularly in the evenings, to improve your mental health, to improve your sleep and to keep you away from the addictive devices that we fit in our pockets. It was quite nice for us recently when we've been doing sessions with young sports people that Erling Haaland came out, gave an interview to Norwegian TV and everything we talk about in terms of putting your phone on do not disturb, not using it late at night, not playing games late at night and even wearing blue lens glasses and it's great that someone like him who's a role model has spoken out about it. But it is important from my point of view that we try to practice what we preach. I have a job which involves being contacted out of work hours by clients sometimes. I'm connected to screens as part of my job. And as a result, this particularly happened during the lockdown, my sleep is not great. So I'm going to give myself a week to try and break that cycle of addiction by applying four rules, four sensible rules that we would give to people during presentations. Um, so what are those four rules? And number one, there's plenty of scientific studies out there that suggest that realistically human beings should be spending more than two hours on a device. I'm not sure I know anyone that spends less than two hours on a device every day. I certainly spend more than that, but, but this is a one week period when I'm going to work really hard to achieve that. Um, one way that I can uh, achieve that is this. So if I show you, if I go to my settings and I go to app limits. Now at the moment you can see I've already got app limits on two uh, social media apps. So Twitter, and that is I guess my dirty secret, Twitter I use a lot. I've also got a one hour app limit on TikTok. Actually that's probably not necessary, but I've got it on there because I try to persuade my 13 year old daughter to do exactly the same. So I've got the same app limit on there. But what I'll do for this one week period is ratchet that up with all apps and categories. Uh, apply a two hour limit to all of that. And see if I can stick to that. Number two. Now one thing that I've already got in place on my phone is on the focus, a do not disturb, but also a sleep focus, which is already preset. What that means is at uh, 10 to 10, my phone goes off do not disturb, which means that no one can call me or message me, with the exception of my wife, my mum and my dad, so they can get me in, in case of an emergency. But I, I am effectively on do not disturb until 7.25 uh, the next morning. Now I'm gonna go one step further, and if you go from settings to screen time again, to downtime, can then schedule a downtime and I'm going to schedule from 9 p.m. my phone will go on downtime. Um, now I can show you what downtime means. It means that all my apps are unavailable so I cannot access my apps until the next morning. Now of course I am a grown-up I can override it at any point but the idea is to incentivize me to self-parent, to self-discipline me to not check my phone beyond 9 p.m. Number three that the ultimate in getting a good night's sleep is to go up at a reasonable time, you know, sometime after 9, 9.30, uh, get in bed, be away from devices and read a good book. Now, I've got a good book currently, which I'm enjoying reading. Um, that is what my plan is. And then number four, one that I don't do all the time, but really should do, not take my phone up to bed with me. If you're checking your phone just before you go to sleep, your brain's still stimulated, you're not getting a good night's sleep. If you're checking it when you get up in the morning, you're gonna drag, drag yourself out of bed only after checking your emails, your WhatsApps, the company bank account or anything else I look at on my phone. So I'm gonna charge my phone downstairs every night so that I'm not checking it until I'm already up, dressed and out of In terms of what is it I'm hoping to achieve from this, well look, it's, it's probably worth relying on a, a little bit of um, technology at this point because like many people, I wear a Fitbit, I use it to track how I'm doing um, when I go for a workout, when I play football on a Sunday night, um, and I find it incredibly useful. I am a bit of a geek, I love looking at the stats on it, so if we have a look on my phone, there we go, it's currently on downtime because I just showed you that. So I'm going to ignore that limit for the next 15 minutes to open the Fitbit, and here it is, I've got to open my sleep page at the moment. Um, and you can see, I don't think that looks great. Less than seven hours every night, and the score, I think it's a score out of 100 uh, that's awarded 74, 76 is the best from this week. Um, and if you can see that, six hours and 15 minutes of sleep, one hour awake, um, it's not great. I'm gonna be analyzing the stats, some of the, some of the only time I'll spend on my phone during the next week or so, um, and see how much I can improve that. So I'm gonna use that to track my sleep and see how tangibly it improves. Hopefully in the long term, I'll be able to adopt some of those things that I've adopted during that week, continue some of the 
Um, and I guess practicing what I, what I preach, I'll be able to genuinely stand up in front of audiences and say, I've done this, I do this, and it's improved my sleep and my mental well-being.